Okay, welcome back. So now we're moving on to factoring trinomials that don't have a 1 as a leading coefficient. So trinomials in general that look like this. So hopefully through the next series of examples, 9 to be specific, you will get proficient at these ones. But don't worry because the method that we covered in the previous video, when we had a 1 in the front, will apply here with the slight modification. Here is our first example. So let's see how to work this out using the method of decomposition. So how does this relate to the monic trinomials? Well, in the previous video, the sum is still a 7, but now we have a small change, which is that the product is not just this 3 here, but 3 times 2. So the item in yellow here is really just the adjustment we need to make in order to facilitate this decomposition. So what are two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 7? Well, those numbers are 6 and 1. Hopefully you didn't have too much difficulty doing that. This decomposition method requires us to split the middle term using the proportion 6 to 1 or 1 to 6. Now what you can do is group and complete the factoring as earlier. So in the first pair of terms, we can take out a 2x, leaving us with x plus 3. In the second pair of terms, the only number that is common to both is a 1, and we need that 1 there as a placeholder. Now we're in a position to complete the decomposition by seeing that x plus 3 is common to both of those terms. When you take out the x plus 3, there you have it. 2x plus 1. And this is the factor form. Remember, you can always check by expanding. So I leave that up to you as an exercise. Let's take a look at another example. So in this example, we have another trinomial that is non-monic. Notice there's a 2 in the front. So we need two numbers that multiply and add to something. The add comes from the middle term, the negative 5, but the product comes from multiplying negative 3 times 2. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Can you think of two numbers there? Actually, they're quite similar to the previous example. Uh, they are in the same magnitude as the previous example, that is negative 6 and positive 1. Let's split that middle term up and apply the decomposition. You'll find that this video goes a little faster than the previous one since you already have the foundation and really it's this little modification that changes. So you've built up a nice uh, skill at this point and we can take advantage of that knowledge. So there you go. 2x is common to the first pair of terms. A 1 as a placeholder is common to the second pair of terms leaving us with a factored form of 2x plus 1 by x minus 3. Okay, so that's a couple in. We're going to try seven more examples. And by the end of this video, I'm confident that you will be proficient at this skill. All right, here we go again. Two numbers that multiply and add to what? Well, the 5 is the easy part. But remember, the product is a little bit tricky, and that product comes from 6 times negative 6, which is negative 36. This is a negative sign here, meaning that we're looking essentially for a difference of 5. So we can do a little multiplication on the side here. 1 times 6, 36 I should say, 2 times 18, and you can search around. Eventually, you're going to get 4 times 9. And that's the key. See, 4 and 9 have a difference of 5. So which way is it? Because that product is negative, meaning that one of these numbers must be negative. Since the sum is 5, that means the 4 has to be negative and the larger number has to be positive. We're off to do some decomposition now. Let's take that middle term, 5x, and split it in this proportion. So negative 4x, positive 9x, 
and a negative 6. Okay, so this decomposition and uh, grouping step is a little bit more complicated, but we can figure it out. Take a 2x from the first pair of terms, leaving us with 3x minus 2. And from the second pair of terms, take a 3 out, leaving us with 3x minus 2. So, there you have it. I'll put the 3x minus 2 first, since it is the common factor to those two terms. See, 3x minus 2 is there. You can pretend in the previous video that we had these as invisible, leaving us with the 2x plus 3. So there you have it. Next example, I'm going to uh, streamline my writing a little bit this time. So we're going to add to negative 3, and our product is a this times this, which is negative 28. There's not many numbers that factor into 28, so the numbers that I'm thinking of are 7 and 4, because they differ by 3. Remember, a minus sign of the product means you're looking for a difference of some sort. The 7 is negative because the larger of the two numbers must be negative, so that their sum is negative 3. And here comes your decomposition step. So what do we have here? What is common to these two terms here? Well, they share a 7 and an x, leaving us with 2x minus 1. In the second pair of terms, a 2 is common, leaving us with 2x minus 1. The 2x minus 1s are common. So we can take them out, leaving us with 7x plus 2. Okay, five more examples to go, and you should be in a good place to factor non-monic trinomials. Let's take a look at this one using the decomposition method. So the product this time is 90, and the sum is 21. Remember, 9 times 10 to get you 90. So what are those numbers? You can experiment a little. I think uh, some quick arithmetic sees that 15 by 6 is the way to go. If you didn't see that right away, that's okay. You can experiment a little bit. And if you have to use the calculator, it's okay. Because at some point, everybody needs a calculator or some technology. So at least within a predefined amount of time or under a test situation. Take a look here. We can split up the middle term as 15x and 6x, and then you have a 10 at the end. Let's do that grouping step. From the first pair of terms, we can take out a 3x, leaving us with 3x and 5. And from the second pair, we can only take a 2 out, leaving us with 3x plus 5. Remember, you want these to be the same. That means that you're in good shape. So. If we take out that 3x plus 5, which is common to both of these terms, then you're left with 3x plus 2, hence the factored form. The only difference between this question and the earlier questions is that the arithmetic is getting a little bit more challenging. Here we want a sum of negative 13 and a product of 30. Remember, 15 times 2 is 30. What numbers do that? Well, 15 and 2. Sometimes you get very, very lucky. In this case, we could put a negative on the 15 since we need a negative sum. But also, this is wrong. Okay, in this example, we have a product and a sum which are 30 and negative 13. Since the product is positive and the sum is negative, both numbers must be negative. And numbers that do this would be 10 and 3 with the appropriate signs. So there you go. Let's split that middle term up in the proportion of negative 10 and negative 3 and do our decomposition slash grouping step. In the first two terms, we can take out a 5x leaving us with a 3x minus 2. And although these look the same, the signs are mismatched, meaning that we should take out a negative 1 so that the 
signs are exactly the same. And there they are. The terms match exactly. So we have 3x minus 2 and 5x minus 1. On to the next one. Okay, the numbers are pretty gross in this question, I'm not going to lie. And at some point, everybody has a threshold where they want to grab a calculator or maybe just uh, use some technology otherwise. So in this case, 11 times 14 is 154. And our sum is 29. So what numbers do that? Well, try this out with me. Try 20 times 9. I know that's wrong, but just try it. And I'm going to not use my calculator here, so hopefully I don't screw this up. That one's not bad. 20 times 9 is 180. That number is too high. We need 154. And the way to do that is to push these numbers further apart. So 21 times 8, so 20 times 8 is 160, plus the 8 is 168. Getting better. Maybe if we go a little bit further, 22 times 7 is 140, and 14 is 154. There you go. So with some very uh, quick guesswork, you can get there. Notice that I didn't look for a tree diagram of 154 and try to get factors, because you're going to be there forever, and you have no time for that. So sometimes it's better to look for the search with the sum. I tend to do that when the numbers are quite large. And in my classes that I teach, I often challenge students to use that technique for very complicated questions. So there's the decomposition step. Let's get this grouping finished. We can take an 11x out of the first two terms, leaving us with x plus 2, and a 7 from the second pair of terms, leaving us with x plus 2 again. Since x plus 2 is common, we can take it out, leaving us with an 11x and 7, which is the factored form. Okay, a couple more to go. Hopefully you have the stamina. I'm trying to do these as clean as possible so I don't waste too much of your time. And there you have 2 times negative 21, which is negative 42. That's our product. The numbers differ by 1, so they must be consecutive. 6 and 7 are consecutive and multiplied to 42, but one of them is negative. The 7 must be negative, so that the sum is negative, because 7 is the larger number. Now we can do the decomposition step. You know, you can put the 6 or the negative 7 first. I'm going to put the negative 7 first. Based on my experience, I find when you put the negative number first, it actually plays out nicer, because you don't have to factor a negative from the second term second pair of terms. So we can take an x out from the first pair of brackets. So there we have 2x minus 7. And from the second pair we can take a 3, leaving us with again 2x minus 7. So 2x minus 7 is common. Let's take out that 2x minus 7, leaving us with x plus 3. And here's our last example. Wow, what's different about this example? I noticed that there's a y and a y squared here. Now, take a look at this pattern here. What if you had x squared, x, and then 1? If you look at the y's, it's kind of this pattern backwards. See, 1, y, and y squared. It's almost like two different stories. When you have this pattern going backwards and forwards, you can apply the exact same method that we've been using which is decomposition. Let's focus on the coefficients only. Two numbers that add to 5 and multiply to 6. Those numbers are 3 and 2. That part's a little bit quicker for you now. Let's do the decomposition step and not be too scared about when you see this. So 5xy is the same as 3xy plus 2xy. Let's make those y's a little nicer. And then you have the 2y squared at the end. Let's do the grouping step. From the first pair, we can take out a 3x, leaving us with x plus y. 
and from the second pair of terms we can take out a 2y leaving us again with x plus y. So if we take out that x plus y we would have 3x plus 2y left over. As a small footnote to this question I'd like to add that if the question was 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 the factored form would be x plus 1, 3x plus 2. As you can see, it's as if the y was invisible. Just something to think about. So, I'll just say here, cool. All right, so uh, we're going to move on to some special factoring forms in the next video. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you.